Hi everyone, Vega here. In today's video we're going to be looking at Arcturus, the red giant star in the next of our brightest star series. So let's get to it. So first of all, where do we find Arcturus? Well the way to do it, it's not all that easy to find, but we can find Ursa Major or sometimes known as the Big Dipper. We follow the tail and it as we can see it makes an arc here and that arc eventually will end us up at Arcturus which is one of the brightest stars in the sky so it should be noticeable. Also known of course as Alpha Boetes. So what kind of class is Arcturus? We can see here the Sun in the middle of the mainstream a G-class dwarf with a surface temperature of around 5700 Kelvin. So where's Arcturus? Well, Arcturus is not on the mainstream, with a luminosity of much higher than the sun, but a surface temperature somewhat cooler, around 4,200 Kelvin. It's a K-class giant. Now, does this make it more massive than the sun? The answer is not really, because it's only 1.08 solar masses. So in terms of mass, it's not that much bigger, but its radius is substantially higher. That's why I haven't labeled it as red giant star. Next up, let's compare relative sizes. So we can see the Sun, small yellow dot. After that, Vega, slightly bigger, 2.362 solar radii, slightly heavier star as well, as you can see. Then let's jump up a few classes to Aldebaran, sometimes known as a red supergiant, perhaps on the giant category, it's very in between the two at 44 solar radii. Although again, look, it's only 1.16 solar masses, so it's not actually that much bigger than the Sun in terms of mass. Very similar to, of course, Arcturus, which is, although its radius is slightly smaller than, than Aldebaran, or about half of Aldebaran, um, both are K-class giants, um, and both, as you can see, they have very similar masses. So let's compare Arcturus to other stars then. First of all, Arcturus is 36.7 light years, so it's in our relative local cluster of stars. Um, and it's luminosity there, which is interesting, isn't it? 170 times that of the sun, remembering that the sun and the Arcturus's mass are very similar. So a much brighter star with the same amount of mass. In our skies, of course, Arcturus, if we look at our list, is fourth brightest after Sirius, Canopus and Alpha Centauri, obviously if we don't include the Sun. So let's make things a little bit more interesting then. Let's let's replace Arcturus as the Sun. So from Earth, how, how bright would it become if we were to replace Arcturus as the Sun? And the answer is extremely bright, obviously at 170 solar luminosities, magnitude jumps up the minus 32.55, so a much, much brighter star than the Sun. So here, here we can see the beautiful city of Shanghai in China and we can see Arcturus developing in the sky, replacing the sun. The beautiful oriental pearl tower and here we can see a plane flying across. Will it escape the, the rays of Arcturus? Arcturus starts to take over, the, the sky turns red. Only Superman can save us now, surely. But no, Shanghai in flames, structures destroyed, Xing Mao Tower is no more, and Shanghai obliterated by the power of the Star of Arcturus replacing the sun. The last people, can they survive? Let's face it, probably not. I think the Earth's toast. So here we can see the diagram, of course, Arcturus has replaced our sun. We saw what happened to Shanghai. So let's move out a little bit further to Saturn's moon Titan. Well, the habitable zone of Arcturus lies between 12 and 23 astronomical units. So Titan may be a little bit close in at this point. Let's find out what happens. Here we can see Arcturus rising in the sky, starting to take over the, the Titan atmosphere, frozen water begins to melt, thickening even further the thick Titan atmosphere, already thicker than the Earth, 
The sky slowly starting to turn blue with the oxygen in the clouds. Frozen lakes of ethane disappearing. Titans coming back to life. Titan landscape, the beautiful landscape of Titan. And now the sky completely blue with the huge Arcturus, about the same size now as the sun in our skies, maybe a little bit bigger. And there we go, Titan becoming a very, very wonderful place, habitable, possibly, as long as Arcturus doesn't get any hotter, of course. So let's carry on, but let's change the dimensions a little bit now. Let's move Arcturus out to 13,000 astronomical units or 0.2 light years. This incidentally is the distance between Proxima Centauri and Alpha Centauri AAB. And let's move ourselves back to Earth. So if we were on Earth and Arcturus was at 13,000 astronomical units, what might we see? So here we can see the beautiful city of Paris lovely Eiffel Tower and Montmartre in the background there and what happens you can see Arcturus slowly rising in the sky slowly developing there at magnitude minus 12 practically Arcturus becomes by far and away the brightest star in the sky almost as bright as the full moon not quite as bright but remember it's 13,000 astronomical units away almost a fifth of a light year Arcturus dominating all the other sky stars in our skies. So let's have a look at Arcturus in fiction. Arcturus as a famous star has been used in many many things down the years. Here are some of the most famous. First of all, the, perhaps the slightly younger members of Ching might know of Arcturus the third in the Harry Potter series. Or perhaps those of you that are big fans of the Aliens franchise might remember a conversation about Arcturian systems between the colonial marines where Vasquez and Hicks and Hudson all talked about their previous exploits in the Arcturian system. Or maybe, perhaps the most famous, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the Bogons, the Starfleeters were all, of course, from Arcturus. So, let's imagine these characters then. We're on one of these huge Vogon spaceships going back towards the Arcturus system. Let's see what might happen. Here we can see Arthur Dent and Marvin, the android, gasping as they, they approach the Arcturus star. Oh no, the Xenomorph. Xenomorph has spewed acid on the controls. We're, we're going to all die, says Arcturus the third. The spaceship gets too close to Arcturus. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to add a like or a subscribe or share if you can. It does help me quite a lot. In our next video, we're going to be looking at Saturn's forgotten moons of Rhea and Iapetus. So stay tuned and I'll see you on the next one.